Get up, get ready, grab your cat, grab your coffee, grab something soft to snuggle because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Face Lynn, and we have a great show for you today. We're looking at the Season 6's best weapons in the rotation, we'll explain the Zero Crisis event in Point of Interest, and of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. Let's talk about a new weapon in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 6 though for a second, the Recycler. I have to say this for all of us that are constantly emptying our clips and running low on ammo, this gun is an absolute lifesaver. You can basically use anything as ammo from rocks to trees, even porn. But up next, the rotation runs down the top 5 weapons in Season 6. <laughs> The launch of Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 6 has seen some of the biggest changes to the core game with its crafting system. Even the entire map changing back in Season 1 didn't affect the game as much as the current season did. Season 6 has introduced the weapon crafting system to the game, giving the loot pool a whole new layer of customization. Starting from makeshift weapons, you can craft mechanical or primal weapons. Mechanical weapons are the good old Fortnite weapons, while the primal weapons are based on dealing a lot of damage with subpar accuracy. Along with the these changes, snipers have been vaulted entirely, and bows are your only shot for long range damage. Today, we'll be taking you through the top 5 weapons in Fortnite Season 6. While the old Fortnite classics, such as scars and pump shotguns, are still pretty great, we'll only be ranking the new weapons in this list. At number 5, we have the Mechanical Explosive Bow. This is one of the most fun bows to use and is somewhat similar to the Boom Bow from Chapter 1. To craft it, you need mechanical parts and grenades. While it doesn't deal splash damage like the Boom Bow, the Mechanical Explosive Bow sets off a series of explosions in a small radius regardless of where your shot hits. These explosions can do 20 damage each, and hitting an 89 body shot directly on an enemy usually means they'll die to one of those mini explosions. It's not the best weapon for competitive situations as it is outclassed by the stink and shockwave bows, but it is pretty satisfying to use and does forgive weak aim. Number 4 on our list is the Primal Assault Rifle. The Primal weapons specialize in dealing a lot of damage with low accuracy, and this weapon is the best example. The Primal Assault Rifle feels like you're holding a basic mechanical assault rifle, except that you can't ADS and it shoots a little bit faster. The weapon isn't what you're looking for in a traditional Fortnite rifle. There's no first shot accuracy, meaning you can't do much to enemies who are over 50 meters away from you. But the Primal Assault Rifle really shines in two situations. First, when you're up close, and second, when you want to spray at enemy builds. This makes it a great weapon to put pressure on boxed up enemies with. The fire rate makes this weapon really good in certain situations, and if you position yourself correctly and hit your shots, it rips through enemies with ease. At number 3, we have another bow the Primal Stink Bow. As the name suggests, this bow allows you to shoot stink bombs. However, compared to the original stink bombs, these have a smaller radius that deals 5 damage per second to enemies within the cloud. This bow is crazy good for competitive matches. In the end, when everyone's boxed up and you know exactly where teams are hiding, shooting a couple of these can do some serious damage to your enemies. This bow is also the hardest to construct and needs either stink sacks, which are acquired from frogs, or stink fish to build. It it will be rare to see matches where an entire enemy team has them, but if you can manage it, there's a pretty good chance you'll win the match. Number 2 on our list is the Mechanical Shockwave Bow, which can be crafted using mechanical parts and shockwave grenades. This is a mechanical bow that shoots shockwave grenades that are weaker than usual for obvious reasons. When used on their own, these grenades can let you travel longer distances than with the bow. The advantage of the bow is being able to gain high ground quickly without risking losing health with fall damage if your attempt should fail. In fact, not being able to travel too far with it works in its favor. Another great use of this bow is in competitive Fortnite, where you can use it to throw enemies out of the storm circle. This is the only upgraded bow in the game that doesn't do damage if you don't hit the enemy. If you manage to land a shot, however, it does average damage, but landing your shot in a small circle around them will only send them flying. 
At number one, we have the Primal Shotgun, one of the most powerful shotguns Fortnite has ever created. This gun can be so strong in some situations that the 16 year olds who didn't like it went on Twitter and spammed hashtag rip Fortnite, just like the last 26 times Epic made changes that they didn't like. Unlike these hashtags, the Primal Shotgun is actually a pretty effective weapon. It is similar to the Drum Shotgun from season one and relies on dealing damage through quick bursts when used up close. The damage dealt significantly drops the further you are from your opponent, but when this gun hits, it absolutely shreds through enemies. About the complaints about it being overpowered, it certainly isn't a clear pick over the pump. Both cater to different playstyles and can be devastating if you know how to use them, but among the list of weapons introduced in Season 6, the Primal Shotgun is definitely the strongest. So we decided to do something a little bit different this week. I invited a friend of the show, John Pritchard, to hop on the battle bus with me, hopefully get some victory royales, maybe tame some wolves, and talk all things season six. This is how it went. All right. Eee! This is so exciting. We ready yeah. to play? We ready to do this? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. You know what? <laughs> I mean, we was literally speaking a second ago how like we are combined for like level six this season, so... Uh... Hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah, we perform like, I don't know, at like level 600 players or something. Like I believe in you. Uh, but here we are, John Pritchard and Face underscore, uh, about to just That's hop right. into their first arena game. I think we're gonna, I think we might get top 10. I, if we, you read my mind. I was, I was happy with a top 10. I'll be happy with a top 10 here. Um, yeah. Usually I, I'm rocking the Link skin, but I have, uh, I have the skin that you can, you can, Form or you can transform into you something can else. Yeah, 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 like yeah. You can upgrade it, I think, right? So like, good. That's that's one thing I love about Epic as well is they they give you an incentive to play the game, right? Like, I mean, a lot of the skins these days are like upgradable, like customizable, providing you gain like the XP or do certain challenges within the game. So it, right. it's super fun. There actually are the people here. Hold on, wait. I hear sure. there are people here. I, I can come to you, John. Alright, I'm on the way, I'm on the way. Hopefully they aren't, uh... They're in here, they're in here. He's not. I think the other guy was over by where the bolt used to be. Potentially. Oh yeah, there we go. They was not ready. The game is not ready. <laughs> What's your thoughts on this new shotgun here, actually? The Primal. Are you, are you a fan of it? Or... I know it's already been nerfed. It's literally already been nerfed since, yeah. since the update last week because it was like ridiculous. Uh, it's a little bit silly. Um, I, I mean, all of the primal weapons, in my opinion, are are pretty strong. Um, you know, they're. It, it's weird because you know you never really. I never really thought that I would be collecting mats and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> materials and items to craft weapons. I kind of feel like I'm playing Save the World right now. Well, this is looted over here. Yeah, we've oh. got a lot of time to work with anyway. Okay, Broke shield. No. I'm gonna shake him for you, just so we know where the locket is. He's on me. Oh my gosh, my building right now. He's hurt. I got him. Nice. Let's go. I'm excited for um the, the Neymar skin. Neymar Jr. I'm not too sure if you're a soccer fan or, or like, I mean, I call it football. I can't believe I just called it soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Cater into the Canadian audience. Right? Uh, I, I have six uh, air bullets right now. I'm kind of hurting uh, for AR. Uh, I'm like in this fight, like at this point. Okay, okay, so. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. No! Oh, I've dropped into his box. No. Oh, I've got that. No! 
12. We came so close to our top 10. Yeah, we said we were going to get top 10. Oh, I'm happy with that, though. To be fair, I should have killed the kid, the kid first kid ages ago. I choked a few shots on him. And then I hit him for eight of the shots. That's the, that's the warm up game, right? Is that warm up game? Warm up game. 100%. Yeah. That was. We need a warm up game. We might need seven warm gonna, up games. I don't know. I'm just going to blame the ping for dying. Okay, let's just try and full send it with these shotguns. 31 blue twice on that guy that's just in there. I'm going up. I've got a mechanical bow as my long range. That is literally a long range. Is that thing good? Like, the mechanical bow? The um, when you can upgrade it to like one of the other um, bows. Got it's... Got oh, okay. Then you should be okay. Where did they go? They're in here. They're where? Not one. Oh, he's like one HP. Nice. Sorry, I think I blocked you there. Yeah, you did. It's fine. Sorry. <laughs> I was waiting for us to both to die and you to just scream at me and go, John, why did you die? Cracked your shield. There's two on me. Cracked one cracked shield. What? There's two in front of me. He's pushing me. They're both been pushing me. They are the spiral skills. Oh, you've got, you've got still another team on you as well, or? No, I'm just I'm trying, trying to... I'm trying to count so they can't get siphon. I'm trying to pull on the music. Shoot! Ah! Uh, Ran out of yeah, shotgun ammo. I um, definitely need to play this game more. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was it was a ton of fun. So thanks, John, for for playing and for hanging out. Uh, and yeah, we'll do this again soon. And and you know what? Stay tuned uh, because sooner or later, John and I will tame a wolf and we will get a victory royale. <laughs>
Knock the other guy. Oh my god! I Just remember, folks, if you want to be featured on Hot Drops, all you have to do is become a super famous content creator, get a bajillion views, and absolutely wreck your competition online. But if you want to be featured in Low Ground, you just have to be hilarious or weird. Which brings us to this clip from Hiram25, who gives us a Zelda versus Fortnite crossover? <laughs> Honestly, I have to say that clip took me back. Sitting in my parents' basement, eating some Doritos, sipping on Dr. Pepper, playing Zelda all day with my brother. Fortnite or Zelda? I don't know. But at the end of the day, let's just get this crossover done. I'm so ready for it. But next, Hantit's X says, I think my wolf is broken. Some may call it broken. I think I'd like to refer to it as breaking it down. Maybe don't hate on that wolf for having the moves. And quite honestly, I like it better this way. I think it adds a little bit more spice, a little bit more flavor. But moving on, Sexy Wingman takes out a whole squad with just one arrow. If you ask me, that's the sexiest of wingmen. Definitely somebody you want to have on your team. But next up, Joyous Crusader goes full on GTA in this clip. All we need at this point are a legion of hackers, flying motorcycles, people begging for money, and we'll have a true GTA online experience. But finally, Crazy Wolf 770 says that Pokemane's emote is back in the shop, so let's take a look. I think it's safe to say that it's definitely back but I think the thing that impressed me the most about that clip was the fact that everybody was so synchronized that if that was a one-shot take I gotta say I'm impressed but stay with us because we are going to explain the zero crisis vent in point of interest Season 6 started off with the game's most unique event yet. Unlike the usual live event where players have to be in a match at a certain time, the Zero Crisis finale took place as a mini single player quest on the Battle Royale island that you can access whenever you'd like. Today, we'll be taking you through what happened in the Zero Crisis finale event, where it leaves us in the story, and what we can expect from the future. Back in Season 4, Galactus from the Marvel Universe invaded our island to extract and consume the Zero Point, which is a blue, glowing orb that fuels energy to the island. This orb is capable of creating rifts and also lets people travel across dimensions. However, Galactus failed to absorb its power because of our intervention, and the Zero Point was left exposed and unstable. In Season 5, Agent Jonesy from an organization called The Order was sent to stabilize the Zero Point and prevent anyone from escaping the loop. The loop is nothing but the Battle Royale game. You jump in, win or lose, and start over. Jonesy had a bunch of hunters from other worlds helping him to prevent anyone 
anyone from escaping the loop. It seems that he succeeded with that, but unfortunately, that was his only victory. At the end of the season, Jonesy had failed in stabilizing the zero point, and transitioning into season six, the orb had grown extremely unstable. This is where the Zero Crisis finale event started. If it imploded, it would destroy the Fortnite universe. The Order didn't seem to care about that, and Jonesy went rogue. He decided to find the Seven, a group of extraterrestrials who are enemies of the Order. Jonesy goes through a lot of effort to make sure the Rift to Go isn't damaged and protects it from all the hunters who have gone rogue on the island. He has been carrying a Rift to Go ever since he left his world, and apparently, dropping that into the Zero Point can summon one of the Seven. This isn't explained properly in the game yet, but it will be interesting to see if this Rift to Go is something special or if any Rift to Go will work. Jonesy then flings it into the Zero Point and immediately, a meteor comes crashing onto the island. It turns out that the meteors are a means of travel for the Seven. This is a very interesting revelation. Back in Season 4, when the meteor crashed onto the island, we were all assuming that it was an E.T.-like situation with an alien finding themselves away from home. Nope. The visitor in that meteor intentionally came to our island. The new meteor contains the Foundation, the leader of the Seven. It has almost been two years since the last member of the Seven was revealed to us and we finally know the identity of the Fourth. The Foundation seems to be mad at Jonesy and refuses to have a conversation until Jonesy promises to take him to Jeno and her sisters. This is the first time these characters are being mentioned and the most common theory is that Jeno is the woman who was in instructing Jonesy from the Order. In return, the Foundation promises to help Jonesy fix the Zero Point. Now, the Zero Point is a very complex system that connects all realities. We don't know everything about it yet, but the Foundation reveals that it had been used so much that the threads within it had gotten entangled. These threads had created tears in reality, spawning portals that needed to be resealed. Using the Rift and having some assistance from us, Jonesy starts resealing these portals. They transport us between various parts of the island and there are many instances where a reality wave crashes onto us, teleporting us elsewhere and changing our outfit in the process. Using these waves and portals, we travel across the island repairing the zero point by fixing the entangled and torn threads of reality. This is our first look into what the zero point is really made of. It's all about these threads, intertwined to create a bridge that connects multiple realities together. In the end, that's not enough and the foundation has to seal himself within the zero point to prevent a reality collapse and contain the orb before it explodes. Jonesy is once again trapped in our world with no way out and the foundation promises to help him escape once the zero point is fixed. In return, Jonesy will tell him everything he knows. Finally, the unstable reality wave takes our island back in time to the primal ages, hence the theme of the new season. I'm so glad that whenever I get confused about something that's happening in the Fortnite storyline, I can always consult Point of Interest to break down a little bit of the lore for me. That about does it for me though, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and once again, here is your Victor Royale with cheese.